Thank you all the children from the ages of one through five. Please see your way. Amen to Children's Church. Amen. I'm going to ask everybody once again to be on your feet. If you're physically able, go into the Bible, to the book of John, chapter 17, verse 20 through 23. If you have a cell phone, please silence it. Amen. We are going to read the word of God. And we're going to allow God's word to minister to us. Amen. John chapter 17, verse 20 through 23. When you have it, say amen. Amen. Let us read. I do not pray for these alone but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, and the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Thank you, Lord. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to be teaching on the subject called the manifestation of God's glory. Amen. So take notes. It's very important that you get educated in the Word of God so that way you can be effective in this sinful world that we live in. Amen? Amen. Prior to Jesus' death, his request was that everyone have the same relationship with God that he has. Trust me, when we're in trouble, we are not thinking of others. We're thinking of ourselves. It sounds common in the generation that we're living in today, a very selfish generation. But we are living in prophetic times, which is end times. And for everyone that's hearing this word and those who are watching through social media, I want to let you know that today the Holy Spirit spoke to me concerning the state of the church and concerning the days that we are fastly approaching it. As we all know by now, it's no secret that we're in trouble. Amen? I know many of us live in self-denial, and we're still living in La La Land, but there is a time that God has selected in his eternal clock to put an end to this. We're talking about not the resurrection. We're talking about the rapture of the church. One of the signs of the rapture of the church is the decline for the presence of God. The decline for the presence of God in today's time, like we're speaking today, it's more relevant than anything. There is no desire for God's presence. Amen? And the, and the evidence of that is visible. You can see it with your eyes. The church is not praying. The church is not interceding. The church is not fasting. The church has no respect for what God has established, for God, what God has ordained. The church is in a decay. But I believe as well as the church is decaying, there is going to be a group of people that are going to step up to the scene and are going to change the patterns of the behavior of the current church and are going to say, we are here, we are here, we are here. And we are not leaving until we see the manifestation of God's glory in our lives and in the lives of others. We are going to prevail. We are going to see miracles. We are going to see the lame walk. We are going to see the blind see. We are going to see principality, the body forces being shifted and moved. Because we, our atmosphere, 
year changers. In order to be an atmosphere changer, in order to carry the glory of God, you have to have self-discipline. Self-discipline begins with an attitude. The church of today doesn't have an attitude of self-discipline. They have an attitude of complacency. We allow what we want to allow and we don't allow what we should allow be allowed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. And Jesus said, I want you to pour onto them the glory that you have given me. Now, the glory is described as the manifestation of God's presence. If nothing is changing, there's something wrong. If something is not being provoked, if things are not being moved, like God has designed them to be moved, there's something wrong. Now, I know many of us don't like this type of message, but I'm the type of person that I cannot stay stuck in a place of complacency. I have to seek every day as a day of opportunity, a day of gain. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Most believers today don't see that because they're not seeking God's presence. They are seeking the benefits of God's presence. What are the benefits? To be prosperous, to be healthy, to be highly favored, and everything else that comes with that part of the package. But many of us don't want the commitment. We want the blessings, but we don't want the commitment. I'm a kind of pastor that I ask people, if they, if they ask me to pray for them, what specifically prayer do you want me to pray? What do you want me to pray for? Because I want to know what I'm coming to agreement with. I just don't want to pray for you, and you have something in secret that might be the opposite of God's will. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are people in the kingdom with hidden agendas. Are, are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Many of them are holding back what God has called them to do for ransom just because they want it to be done on their time and their terms. And God doesn't work that way. When God calls you, he equips you, he prepares you, he even finances it. Amen? Everything works accordingly. Now, if there's something taking place that's not allowing the flow of the glory of God to be completely in your life, then you have to start self-evaluating yourself. What have I been giving my time to? The manifestation of his glory is seeing the possible through means or without means. In other words, where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> If God has given you what he has given you, value it, treasure it, don't take it for granted. He has given it to you because he has trusted in you that you are capable of taking care of what he has blessed you with. Many of us forget that. And that's why we find ourselves in predicaments that we shouldn't have found ourselves in the first place to begin with. Now, too much is given, much is required. Many of you have the gift of interpreting tongues, the gift of evangelizing, the gift of preaching the gospel, of teaching of prophesizing. But today we don't see that in the church because everybody's competing against everybody. We're not working as a team. The glory of God is demonstrated where there's unity. They gather around Jesus for a miracle. They gather, meaning more than one, and the presence of God is caused by that unity that we see.
seek after. But what's going on with today's church? Today's church has neglected the beauty of God's glory, has neglected the spiritual growth aspect that plays into the role. When the glory of God descends on a human being, it, be, it, it, it crowns that human being or that man, and it also fills the earth. The glory of God which translates into the manifestation of his attributes. That whatever God has said or whatever <laughs> God has designed will come to pass. We are not seeing that happening today because we are spending more time worrying about things that don't pertain to us to begin with. You live in a neighborhood that God placed you in that neighborhood. Or in some cases, you might have placed yourself because some of you get ahead of God. But I'm talking to the ones that God has called to certain neighborhoods or certain cities. You are the light of that neighborhood. When you curse your neighborhood, you curse yourself. You become part of that curse. It's like the prophet Elijah. He wanted to prove something to, a to King Ahab. And he said it's not going to rain for three years. And then he has the nerves to ask a widow for a cup of water when he costs the drop. How are you going to curse the city of Springfield? How are you going to curse your neighborhood? Be thankful for your neighborhood because what you have, other people wish they had. Amen. That's right. God is looking for people that have an attitude of gratitude. One of the signs of the end times that we're living in is being ungrateful. I need to have more in order to do more. God is saying, show me what you can do with what you have right now, and then I'll give you more. Yes. Because if I give you more, you're going to make more excuses not to use it. Exactly. Yes. Wow. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. When you carry the glory of God, your culture is now subject to you, not you to your culture. Amen. The only time you become part of your culture is when you let your culture influence you. And how does your culture influence you? By what you hear, what you see, and what you speak. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? If we want to see the glory of God, we have to start speaking of the glory of God. We have to start provoking the glory of God by what we hear, by what we see, by what we declare, and based on however we walk. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? But no, the church of today does the opposite of that. But now that we're in revival season, I'm not going to be the only pastor that's preaching this bold message. You're going to hear it everywhere you go. Because there's a wave of men and women who are going to rise up and are going to say, I have defined, I have defined what the problem is. The problem is here. The problem is not out there. The problem is here. The problem is here. How, how, do, how do you figure out problems in your house? How do you figure out people are running up a bill in your house when you get that bill? And you say, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Water bill went up? Who's washing the car? Who, who, who's watering the grass? Who, who, who's sneaking in here and making pools at night? Why? Because it causes you something. So now you go on an investigation mode. Imagine if you did that in the spiritual. You will see how many loopholes and how many holes and how many things are going on in your life that shouldn't be going on. You have the authority by God to set things in order. Amen? And it begins with you. Amen? The glory of God is available to anyone who wants to step into it. It's available right now to anyone who wants to step into it. All you have to do is surrender. Surrender what? Everything that makes you. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? Everything that makes you, you surrender all that to enter into the glory of God. Where you become self-denial. You say, you know what? God, you're more important than me. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I need you more than I need me. That's right. It's all about you, not me. Because if I'm in you, you are going to, to sustain me. You're going to take care of me. It's not about me. It's about you. You are God and you are holy. You are a throne and I want you in my life. Let you be in me. And not me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That was the message that Jesus was preaching. He was praying for each and every one of us. In John chapter 7, 17, he was saying that the same glory, I mean, we're talking about a man that healed the blind, a man that walked the water, a man that called the death after four days, and I'm still dealing with mediocrity in my life. The reason why people don't respect you is because you don't respect yourself. You can't demand something you ain't given. How do you know a man or woman of God come into a place where the atmosphere change? I run into all kinds of people that walk in all different kinds of ways, ways of life. And the first thing is that they're able to identify is that I'm different. Now, by the way I dress, by the way I behave. Because you have playboys that dress like me and are out there hollering after women. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So fashion has nothing to do with it. Amen? Amen? Are you hearing what I'm saying? It begins within the inner you. Amen? Amen? So Jesus is praying for his disciples, and he's also praying for the future disciples. Amen? And he's saying, I want them to enter, to have, to possess, to rip down, to, to build, to root. All of it begins with self-denial. Now, the concept of self-denial is the true essence of a Christian life. If you want to know who's a real follower of Jesus Christ, the fruits will give evidence that they are. I, I don't know. I, let me tell you something. I, I know many of you are dealing with hurt, pain, and many of you are uh, are justified because of that. You're saying somebody betrayed me. Someone talked about me. Someone did this. Someone did this. Someone did this. And it goes on and the list goes on. Check this out. I'll take betrayal any day over being lashed 39 times. I'll take betrayal over a cross any given day. I'll take betrayal better than being whooped. Being thrown into a lion's den, being robbed, being mobbed, I'll take that any day. Talk about me all you want. That's better. Actually, that's self-promotion. Yes. Amen. They talked about me. They talked about me. Oh, my God, she's here. I don't know what to do. I don't know. Grow up. Learn how to forgive. When you learn how to forgive, you release yourself. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why Judas wasn't an issue for Jesus, even though Jesus knew that Judas was going to betray him. But he wasn't an issue for him. Why? Because he understood that that was part of his process. Where would Jesus be if Judas never betrayed him? This, this wouldn't make sense. We wouldn't be gathering here today. In other words, something has to happen in order for something to come out of that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Mother Church of today ain't hearing that. Why? Because we have the mind of the world, not the mind of Christ. The mind of the world today is, be you. Do you. Don't, let, don't mess with you, man. And when we think that we're actually doing any better by making declarations like that, no, no, no. What we're actually doing is leave their cane and we're falling behind with God's purpose and plan. Because now you're opening the door for rebellion. Now you're rebelling. Now, now you're your own person like people. I don't go to church. I, I, I do church at home. You're lying. You know no church at home. You can't go to church at home. If that's the case, then prove what you're doing against me. John, John, uh, first of John, prove that to me. Where Jesus stated 
that where my people gather, I am there. The reason why we ain't gathering is because we're not doing it in the same spirit. We're doing it with divided spirits. Let me see what she's wearing. Let me see what he's going to say. Instead of walking into the church of God with the courts of thanksgiving, thank you, God, that I'm able to see my sister. Thank you, God, for my brother. Thank you for the little ones. Thank you for everybody. And rejoicing in that. No, no, no. America doesn't want none of that. End of time signs are, first of all, selfish. Greed. Yes. You have to have more. People are just so greedy nowadays. They can't even feed the needy. We're living in a generation full of greed. I, I just got to have more. I, I just got to have more. They're, they're not content. They're out there chasing material things. Buying things they can't afford, spending what they cannot spend, and then they're waiting for a miracle to come from heaven. Let me tell you something. God is going to call each and every one accountable for what he has given them, including your finances. He will give account. I don't throw away food. I take that food to work the next day, and we're going to eat. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Let me tell you how real this is. We're, we're six months away from entering into 2020. Did you know that's the new turn of a new century? Mm -hmm. How many of you knew that? Amen? 2020 is also a prophetic year. We're, we're six months away from that. When you look at God's timing and numbers, you have to have respect for that because that is the billboard telling you what's coming next. We usher in a new president. Maybe the, or the president right now will probably go into re-election and probably win again. We don't know. But we're entering into a precise timing. What the church of today in America doesn't understand is that when 2020 comes in, we're going back into a recession. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I know some of you who work in real estate or in cars and stuff like that, you're probably saying otherwise. Let me tell you something. You're not even certain yourself right now what you're selling because you know that we're heading into another recession. Okay? Recessions are not good, but they're necessary because it humbles people. <clears throat> it humbles people. It humbles people. Say, oh, okay, now I don't need to go out and eat five days a week. Yes. Some of you are depending on the government to help you out when you retire. Let me tell you something. If you're waiting for that, <laughs> the wells run dry. They ain't not in the well. They ain't not in the well. You're going to work probably until you're 90 until you probably die because there's nothing there. It has been abused. It has been robbed. And the people have been lied to. If you ain't have no assets, I feel bad for you. So it's time that you start working on getting some land and start investing wisely because the kingdom of God is only available to those who are willing to take it by force. Amen. I came across this article the other day that I was reading on my tablet, weekly journal, and it said America has ranked up a trillion dollars in personal debt. Most of that made by student loans, and the other by car loans. I was reading that article, and it made me think about something. It made me think about this. Okay. If God has given you for the future, you always got to think about that rainy day. It's not that God's going to leave you. God will always be there for you. He will forsake you, and he will keep you. But when God spoke to Joseph, he told Joseph, there is going to be a famine in the land for seven years. It is your responsibility as the man that I called you to start putting away. The first thing that, 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 that Joseph did was he gets crowned as the governor of all Egypt. He didn't say, I'm going to go look and retaliate on my brothers, the ten ugly brothers who sold me. 
I'm going to go show off my crown, my bling bling. I, I got a horse and carriage. You know, back then the, the, the Egyptians went all out. I'm about to take me about seven, eight wives. No, he said, let me go search the land so that God can show me where I need to start planning for the recession that's coming. You see, we hear about God blessing us, but we don't get ready for the blessing. That's the problem. And when the blessing comes in, we miss it. If you're asking God for a spouse, a wife, a husband, you're asking God for anything. Ask God to prepare you for that. You're asking God for a house, but you ain't ready to cut no grass. That's right. <laughs> I... Until he spoke everything into existence. 
existence. Oh, okay, it said it hovered, it hovered, but it couldn't dwell until he said everything in order. He said he put the light into the day, the night into the night, the river. Oh, man, I can't be in a mess if I'm in a mess. Then that means I need to get right with God. I'm not going to be a subject of other people. I'm going to be a subject of God. Yes. Especially in my workplace. Pastor, did you see how they looked at me? I don't know. I'm in my own world. How they looked at me? Oh, I don't know. I recognize faces like that. I only recognize places they're going to bless me. You know, so if I see somebody smiling at me, they're going to bless me, I'm going to look at them. But if they look at me, I don't recognize God as I say, I don't. 
<laughs> no, I don't have time for that. Because if I do give in to that, then I mean that I'm their prisoner. I'm their slave. Mm. I'm not their slave. That's right. Come on. I, the, not too long ago, about a year ago, uh, make turn that AC. It's getting kind of hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Give me a round of applause for that. My neighbors across the street about a year ago, so neighbors moved across the street. And at one point, the, the guy, the gentleman who lived there, will pull up to the street and he will look at me with his face. <laughs> mm. He caught me on a hot day when I was mowing my lawn. And when I'm mowing and I'm hot, I get a little woo. <laughs> But I had to check myself and I said, you know, Jose, you're the pastor, you can't be wilding out. So I said, you know what, I'm going to put an end to this. So I, I decided to cross over the street. Hey, God bless you. How you doing? Mm. Uh, how's it going? My name is Pastor Jose. You know, I live across the street. He's, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you, you You introduced yourself a week ago to me. I said, I did. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but why do you look at me the way you look at me? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, because every time you pull up, you look at me like I did something. Did I offend you? Something wrong? We neighbors. We have to be at peace. Go on here, love. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I was being sarcastic with him, but I was talking to him. A month later, I saw a U-Haul truck. And I said, well, you don't get to talk But I didn't allow him, with his insecurity, with his bad attitude, mm -hmm. come into my neighborhood and think that it was okay to look at me a certain way. Mm -hmm. I wasn't gonna fight. I ain't nothing, I ain't gonna do, but God gonna fight for me. Yeah. But what I did was I said things in their place in a respectful way. I said, is there a problem? Is everything okay? Because you're looking at me some way. And I don't like it. I feel like I, I offended. Did I offend? No, 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 no. You're okay, Papa. You're okay, Papa. No, no, no. Everything is Papa now. Papa, Papa, Papa. <laughs> and, and what I discovered was that the enemy has a strategic way to get you out of communion with God. And he will do it with people. With people. With people. You can't be mad at people. You gotta be mad at the spirit that that person is operating. Because instead of me being stupid and being ignorant and coming from the level that God has me, has me to come down to his level and say, oh, why are you looking at me, man? Apostle, why are you looking at me? I would have been a fool. Yes, yes. And I would have made a fool out of myself. And God would have been like, you on your own. Now you're going to reap the consequences because you should have had a better attitude. God used you. How can God use you if you don't know how to use yourself? You get mad over, oh God, I want to do this. And that's okay. Maybe you want to help women. Maybe you want to help men. But if that ever occurred to you, that you're dealing with human beings. So in order to work with human beings, God has to work with you first because we're yes. full of emotions. But if emotions will never override a fact. Come on. Are, are you hearing right. what I'm saying? The fact of the matter is, this is what it is. And God is saying to his people, it's time to grow because I have not done this in vain. I want my glory to be manifested through you so that you can do wonders and signs and I can use you just like I use Jesus. I want to delight myself. Jesus said that those who are coming before him, I mean those who are coming after him are going to do greater things. You need to tell me if Jesus rose a dead man. And I can't even raise myself from bed to go to <laughs> This brother was dead for four days. Jesus ran into his complaining both sisters, Mary and Martha. And if that's your name, please excuse me. That's what the Bible says. Jesus, you're the one you were complaining. You're the one you were Oh, man, I, 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 I could see Jesus. I could see Jesus in 2019. Yo, whatever. 
Ain't nobody, ain't nobody want to get that. What are you that? Wake up, Lazarus, you sleeping, brother. We got to gotta keep it moving. Thank God that Jesus is not in this century like that, acting like that, acting like that in that time. Amen? But what I'm saying is that we as the church need to prevail as people. We need to grow. We need to expand. We need to win others. Right now, there's a desire for people to hear this word. What are we doing with our time? You see, we're, we're in the church. God give me, God give me. Let me tell you something. I learned what prosperity is all about. Prosperity is not about having material things. Uh, are you hearing what I'm saying? Material things are material things. Okay? Prosperity is to be free in Christ Jesus and to prosper in everything that you do. Meaning that everywhere that I walk, I'm no longer chasing after the blessing. I'm no longer suffering for the blessing. The blessing is chasing after me. The blessing is trying to keep me. I'm, I'm over here the blessing. So wherever I go, I'm a blessing. Wherever I stand, I'm a blessing. And I'm all blessed. Those around me, amen? Just having a company of a blessed person is sufficient enough for you to have a good day. What was the last time your co-worker said, I couldn't wait to see you. I'm so excited. Oh, man, you know, every time I work with nah, nah, your co-worker said, I charge you this way. There's got to be an aura. There has to be some kind of tangible presence of God that people long for when they see you. They don't know what it is, but they say, man, every time you're around, woo, I can smell you from a mile away like Pippin' up you. Uh, are you hearing what I'm saying? But the presence of God is not where it should, where it should be because we are not giving it the time or day for it to be. But first of all, we don't study the word. We read the word, we don't study. When you read the word, you're going to only understand or comprehend what you're reading. When you study, you get in depth. Yes. That's why a sinner could quote a scripture. And you say, how is it possible that he quote that scripture when he's completely out of contact? Exactly, completely out of contact. Because the Bible says, I will bless you. But there's a key word in the Bible. It's called but. But, if you obey me, but, but, and we don't want to hear, we want to hear the first verse. We want to hear the pastors that preach about the good verse. But we don't want the pastors to preach about the commitment verse. Insurance will only cover you as long as you abide by what's been established. The kingdom of God will protect you as long as you abide by the kingdom rules. Yep. Not the church, the kingdom of God. Are you here? The kingdom of God is not an institute. It's not a company. It's not a corporation. It's the kingdom of God. It stands on God. It lives by God. Corporation change, like, like you know, society today, we have to be diverse, we have to be understanding. We can't talk that way. Um, hello, uh, God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Um, hello, those objects were designed to find themselves in a place. Uh, are, you, are you hearing what I'm saying? Am I speaking to the right church or am I speaking to the church that completely Amen. has compromised Amen. God's standings and oh, now they're yeah. lukewarm and they just go, oh, no, 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 it's okay, no, it's not okay. Because the same spirit that's in that person could be transferable. I, I, didn't just, I didn't just start smoking when I was a youth. I didn't just start smoking. Somebody was smoking around me. Somebody started drinking around me. And, 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 I, and I started sipping and I started smoking. I remember when, when, when I got involved in that stuff. You see, 
someone introduced me. They didn't have to preach to me to smoke cigarettes. All they had to do was be around my environment or be around their environment, and I became part of their environment. Uh, are you hearing what I'm saying? If you hang around with people that speak kingdom and talk kingdom, and walk kingdom. I guarantee you that your language and behavior at one point or another. Look, look how crazy this is. Peter couldn't even get away from it. They say, you want to hear? No, not me. They have Facebook back then. They have Twitter. They didn't even have a camera. But his presence was so embedded in Peter that no matter where Peter walked, he couldn't get away Amen. from God's presence. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That, that, that's the secret of that. He couldn't get away from it. He, he had no idea that he was saturated by it. That, that he was hiding in the crowd. And back then it was easy to hide because any person could just put a veil over their head. And they said that Peter had a veil over his head. He was sitting in the fire. And, they, and there was no lights. There was no street lights like that. They're like, oh, wait. Oh, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> They recognize him, even though he tried to fit in. Let me tell you something. When God has called you, you can't fit in. You can't fit in. You can't fit in. No matter how much you try to hang out with backsliders, you can't fit in. You're like, I've been people. I know I gotta get right. Oh my god, get away from my check. Oh my god. And you get desperate. Why? Because you have been saturated. They said nothing can separate you from the yes. love of God. And even when you find yourself yes. in the lowest place, God's going to find you. Even if That's God right. got to use TV shows That's to speak okay. to you. That's Even if God got to use cartoons to speak to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because once God got you, He got you. That's he right. Got you. He yes. got you.
than to know you. Because when you know God and you're part of God, even if you rebel, there's a seal yep. upon you. Yeah, you could be getting yeah. high in the basement and the drug dealer who's selling you the drugs say, I, I can't sell you no drugs. Yeah. I don't know why. Get out of my house. Yeah. <laughs> That's the mark of God. That's the mark of God. That's the mark of God. Sal in the Bible went to speak to a medium, a psychic, and the psychic said, oh, no, 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 no. You don't have to talk to your God. I'm at peace, God. Your God is greater than my God. This is part-time. You're full-time. That's the same benefits. I work for the kingdom of hell. You know, that's only part-time benefits. Because when I go to hell, I'm going to pay for it. But you work for a full-time God that's full-time benefits. So, so she said, so you have to, you, you're going to have to pray that your God don't come after me. I'll do this. People feel convicted the moment they come around you because the glory of God. That's why they shut off the cigarettes. That's why they save the beers when you leave. You know, when I leave some places, I go places all the time. They just die for me to leave. It's like a few hours. <laughs>
know I didn't mean to. And you could tell he was in a brawl. He got into a fight, some altercation. Something happened. He goes, man, the car's there. You're giving, you crazy. You're still in the passenger's car. You shouldn't be sitting in my car. He said, he said to me, that, that, that's why I'm bringing it back. I'm sorry. I kid you not. Months before that happened, we were here on a Wednesday night. That's why you need to come on Wednesday. And we were praying. And all of a sudden, I told the church, run outside and anoint your car. Remember that? And annoy your car. Months later, this happened. When I got my car back and the cops came, the cops couldn't even believe that the thief. And to make things, to make matters even worse, that is the one of the most highly stolen cars in America. Are, are you there? I'm not gonna give you my making model because I don't want you to steal my car and I don't want you to follow this. <laughs> but it, 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 it's one of them, one of the top five of the most common stolen cars in America, okay? And you couldn't believe it. My wife left her purse there with all the money, you know, because women think that the, the car is a store, it's just a safe house. <laughs> <laughs> at least, at least if they steal my car, my wallet's in my pocket, so I can get by. I can call an Uber, I can call a man, I can call the Uber, I can call the police, I can get away. But everything was there, nail polish, you name it, it's the only thing. But when he gave me the car, and I said, Yo, you know what, just get out of here, the cops are coming, just leave. I got in the car, I drove it back, and there was some Jesus culture music playing in that car. Amen. Amen. The manifestation of the presence of the glory. I bet you when that guy got in there, he probably, God started working with him. You ain't right. You better do that. I went to the 
wrong suit on a rainy day? Snowing. Snowing. <laughs> I didn't know. I just went. It was free. <laughs> Every Wednesday, it's free for the public. You know, I'm going in there. I was expecting to see tigers, monkeys, giraffes, lions, seagulls, you name it. They put all of those exotic animals away and they just had just the ones that are part of nature. Bears, deers, and things that I'm used to seeing here in the Northeast anyways. <laughs> and, I, and I remember we walked and we walked and we walked and we walked and we walked. And I was having a good old time, you know, because I said to myself, you know, you work all week, all year long, and you just want to take some time to spend with your family. And, and you can see some of the people's faces in that place that were so uh, uh, upset because it was snowing. Uh, 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 and there's this man, Pastor Billy and Rebecca both who used the restroom, and I decided to just wait for them outside so I was sitting by a bench. And there was a man there who was Asian, I believe. He didn't speak our language because I tried to interact with him, and all he kept doing was smiling. <laughs> now, I don't know what he was saying. You're enjoying yourself? Like, yeah, yeah. And while he was sitting there, enjoying this miserable weather day, he had an oxygen tank. And I said, I got two perfect lungs, praise be to God. I have no respiratory issues. And this man is enjoying himself. And me that I have Christ, I should be old. And I was. But it goes to show you how the devil can steal from you what God designed for you. So many of you today are complaining because you don't have the things that you want. But let me tell you something. You have more than those who are no longer in this earth. And that's life. Even if you're here today and you don't want to be here. Many of you have written off messages. I can't wait to leave. Let me tell you something. If God called you here, you could go in a big old circle. And I'll be at Bradley International Airport. Or at the gates where it says, welcome to Massachusetts. Sitting there saying, welcome back. The glory of God that dwells in Massachusetts. It is so great. That even in your foolish ways, you went around <laughs> to another state yes. that doesn't have what this state has. Amen. First of all, the best good looking pastor in all of Western Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm confident about that. <laughs> I've seen some stuff. Oh and I'm telling you, son, don't bet your money somewhere else. Because you ain't going to find it. <laughs> but I love saying something for real, man. <laughs> To wrap this up, and we're going to be teaching about this for the next weeks to come, understand that there's a price to be paid for you to obtain the glory of God. It begins with, first of all, you surrendering. Surrendering, denying yourself, and letting God be who God is in you. Without fighting God, stop fighting God. Let God be God. Are you going to say, let him be, let him be. Let him remove the people he needs to remove as well. Accept God's will. Wipe your face, get up and keep walking. Amen. Later on in life, you're going to thank God that he allowed you to experience that. Because some of those people in the future ain't going to look as pretty as they look now. Like some of my ex-girlfriends. I said, hallelujah. Me too. Thank God you left me. things for you. 
but you've got to be willing to allow him to be him and you because his ways are better than your ways. And by now, your ways haven't got you absolutely nowhere. So we might as well surrender. Amen? Amen. Let us bow our heads. Father, we thank you for the word that was preached today. That we become like Jesus. Jesus prayed this prayer, believing that one generation was going to arise and be a generation of conquerors, people who are bold, people that will say no to the enemy and yes to you. Father, I thank you for this generation, the generation of John chapter 17, verse 21 through 23, that your glory, your Shekinah glory, be manifested in us. Father, we thank you. We ask you to have your way with us. And before we close, Father, dear God, we just want to give you five minutes. If you could turn down the lights and play the song, amen.